All of us are made up of trillions upon trillions of atoms. Of the 92 naturally occurring elements, six, hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, and calcium, account for more than 98% of our mass. The same is true throughout the web of life. From large predators such as lions to huge herbivores like hippopotamuses and the grasses that give them energy. Besides hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus and calcium atoms, other types of atoms such as sodium, potassium, magnesium and iron also play critical roles in the functioning of living organisms but contribute little to their total mass. Living organisms are built as a result of interactions between atoms called chemical reactions that form either charged particles called ions or combinations of atoms called molecules. The survival of all living organisms depends on the flow of various ions and on the synthesis of thousands of different kinds of molecules within their cells. To understand how ions and molecules are formed we need to know a little bit about the structure of the atoms out of which they are made. Atoms are divided into two major parts, a centrally located nucleus that contains positively charged protons and uncharged neutrons, and one or more orbitals regions in the space surrounding the nucleus in which negatively charged particles called electrons travel about continuously at nearly the speed of light. Protons and neutrons each have a mass approximately 1836 times greater than that of electrons. However, in spite of the huge difference in mass between protons and electrons, their electrical charges, though opposite, are equal in magnitude. As atoms have equal numbers of protons and electrons, they are electrically neutral. Every element has a unique atomic number. The atomic number of an element corresponds to the number of protons found in the nuclei of its atoms. For example, hydrogen atoms have one proton and an atomic number of one. Helium atoms have two protons and an atomic number of two. While carbon atoms, which form the atomic skeleton of all the larger molecules found in living organisms, have six protons in their nucleus, giving them an atomic number of six. While every atom of a given element has the same number of protons, the number of neutrons contained in the nucleus of atoms of the same element can vary. For example, carbon atoms can have four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine neutrons. Each of these different forms of carbon is referred to as an isotope. Isotopes of a given element like carbon are virtually identical to one another in terms of chemical reactivity, but sometimes vary in their physical properties. For example, the nuclei of some isotopes, called radioactive isotopes, spontaneously disintegrate, releasing radiation in the process. In the case of carbon, the isotopes carbon-12 and 13 are stable, while carbon isotopes 10, 11, 14, and 15 are radioactive. The existence of radioactive isotopes in carbon and other elements allows scientists to carry out tasks as different as dating the fossil remains of long dead organisms to studying the physiology of the human mind. However, it is the behavior of electrons in an atom's outer orbitals that determines how the ions and molecules critical to life are formed. As electrons travel about in their orbitals, a given electron can be found anywhere in its orbital, which it can share with only one other electron. However, the probability that an electron will be found in a given location in the orbital varies from location to location. 
the varying densities of the electron clouds in modern charged cloud models of the atom reflect the probability of finding an electron at a given point in its orbital. The greater the density in an area of the electron cloud, the higher the likelihood that an electron will be found there at any given time. Orbitals extend out from the nucleus at increasing defined distances to form what are called electron shells. The electron shell closest to the nucleus has only one orbital. The second one has four orbitals, the third nine, while the fourth, fifth, and sixth electron shells have 16 orbitals. The seventh and final electron shell has only one orbital. The amount of energy an electron has depends on which electron shell it is in. Electrons in the electron shell closest to the nucleus have the least energy, while those in the electron shells furthest from the nucleus have the most energy. Because an electron's energy level can be judged by the electron shell it occupies, electron shells are often referred to as energy levels. It is the interactions occurring between the outer energy levels of atoms that create ions and molecules. A basic principle of atomic reactivity states that atoms with unstable electron arrangements in their outer energy level or shell will react with another atom or atoms in order to achieve a more stable electron arrangement. The most stable arrangement of electrons in most atoms consists of having eight electrons in their outer energy level. The exception is hydrogen atoms, which have only one electron in a single energy level. They obtain stability by adding a second electron to their lone energy level. Atoms obtain eight, or in the case of hydrogen, two, electrons in their outer energy level by giving up electrons, sharing electrons, or taking electrons from other atoms. The giving up, sharing, or taking of electrons that occurs between atoms creates forces called chemical bonds. It is chemical bonds that hold atoms together. Two major types of chemical bonds join atoms together. Ionic bonds, which are formed when atoms acquire or give up electrons in their outer energy level, and covalent bonds, which are formed when atoms share some or all of the electrons in their outer energy levels. The atoms of some elements have only one, two, or three electrons in their outer energy levels and are therefore well short of eight. The atoms of other elements have outer energy levels that are just an electron or two short of eight. Atoms with almost empty outer energy levels become stable by giving up the electrons in that level and allowing the energy level just below with eight electrons to become the outer energy level. On the other hand, Atoms with outer energy levels just a few electrons short of eight achieve stability by acquiring the electrons necessary to obtain an outer energy level of eight electrons. A classic example of the giving up and acquiring of electrons by atoms occurs in the formation of sodium chloride, or salt, a substance of great biological significance. Sodium atoms have only one electron in their outer energy level while the energy level just below has eight. The outer energy level of chlorine atoms have seven electrons, one electron short of eight. Thus, sodium atoms become stable by giving up the single electron in their outer energy level so that the energy level below becomes the atom's outer level. On the other hand, chlorine atoms achieve eight electrons in their outer energy level by taking on another electron. Thus, when sodium and chlorine atoms come together, sodium atoms give up their outermost electron to chlorine atoms. As a result, both become more chemically stable. Something else happens as well. The sodium atoms become positively charged because they have one less electron than proton. 
while the chlorine atoms become negatively charged because they now have one more electron than proton. Atoms that become charged as a result of losing or gaining electrons are called ions. These stable but oppositely charged ions stay near one another, forming an ionic compound. The electrical attraction that holds the oppositely charged ions together is called an ionic bond. The atoms in an ionic compound arrange themselves in a way that maximizes the attraction between oppositely charged ions and minimizes the repulsion between like-charged ions. This results in the brittle crystalline structure characteristic of solid ionic compounds like salt. However, in living organisms, it is the flow of ions dissolved in water across cellular membranes and the resulting distribution of electrical charges that is important. As you will see later, water has special characteristics which allow it to dissolve ionic solids and separate them into their component negatively and positively charged ions. Ions dissolved in the blood plasma of animals and the watery cytoplasm of all living organisms play critical roles in sustaining life on Earth. Atoms that are one or more electrons short of a stable electron arrangement in their outer energy level can also become stable by sharing electrons with other atoms in a process called covalent bonding. The most straightforward example of covalent bonding occurs when two hydrogen atoms join. Hydrogen atoms are one electron short of filling an outer energy level that holds two. When two hydrogen atoms share their electrons, both become more stable as a result. As the nuclei of two hydrogen atoms are identical, neither can completely capture the other's electron. As a result, the electrons spend part of their time in the outer energy level of each hydrogen atom. The result being that each hydrogen atom behaves as if it had two electrons in its outer energy level. The negatively charged area created by the overlapping energy levels attracts the positively charged nuclei of each hydrogen atom. Thus, the two atoms stay together, not because they are attracted to each other, but because the positively charged nuclei of each hydrogen atom is attracted to the area of negative charge created between them by the shared electrons. The bonds formed as a result of these attractions are called covalent bonds. The units of matter formed by atoms joined through covalent bonds are called molecules. Some of the atoms most common in biological molecules are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. Atoms of all these elements are one or more electrons short of a stable outer energy level. They obtain stability by sharing one or more pairs of electrons with one or more other atoms. The number of covalent bonds the atoms of each of these elements can form is equivalent to the number of electrons they are short of for a stable outer energy level. A single covalent bond consists of one pair of shared electrons. Hydrogen atoms have only one electron and so can form only one covalent bond with another atom. Oxygen atoms, which are two electrons short of eight, can form two single covalent bonds with two other atoms or a double bond with one other atom. Nitrogen atoms, which are three electrons short, can form three single bonds, a double and a single bond, or one triple covalent bond. While atoms like these can join together in a variety of molecular combinations, none can provide the molecular skeleton required to create the huge complex molecules essential to life. But fortunately for we living organisms, carbon atoms, which are four electrons short of eight in their outer energy level, can. The ability of carbon atoms to form up to four single covalent bonds means that they can create molecular chains that branch off into other chains and form three-dimensional biological molecules of almost infinite variety and complexity. Thus, carbon atoms form the molecular skeleton of all the large molecules found in living organisms. 
While these large carbon-based molecules are critical to life, so are other, much smaller molecules. Molecules of H2O. The sharing of electrons between the nuclei of atoms joined by covalent bonds is not always equal. While in hydrogen molecules, the shared electrons spend equal time near each hydrogen nucleus, in water molecules, the nucleus of the oxygen atom attracts the electrons more strongly than does the nucleus of either of the hydrogen atoms. This results in the oxygen atom in a water molecule forming a negatively charged pole while the hydrogen atoms form positive poles on either end of the molecule. Molecules that have electrically charged poles are called polar molecules. Molecules such as hydrogen, which have no charged poles, are called nonpolar molecules. Because water molecules are polar, weak bonds called hydrogen bonds form between them as positively charged hydrogens are attracted to the negatively charged oxygens. While hydrogen bonds are only about one-tenth as strong as covalent bonds, they nonetheless give water some unique qualities. For example, water molecules tend to stick together because of hydrogen bonds which account for the surface tension that allows various insects to walk on water and the cohesion between water molecules that allows long threads of water to be pulled up the trunks of trees as a result of evaporation in the leaves. The polar nature of water gives it another characteristic that helps explain why nearly all living organisms are 60 to 90 percent water. Because water molecules are polar, water is an extremely good solvent. That is, water can dissolve a wide range of substances to form a solution. Consequently, water is often called the solvent of life. As you recall, electrical attraction between positively charged sodium ions and negatively charged chlorine atoms hold sodium chloride or salt crystals together. However, dropping salt into water results in the crystalline compound breaking apart, dissolving as the positively charged hydrogen ends of water molecules surround the negatively charged chlorine ions and the negatively charged oxygen ends surround the positively charged sodium ions. The freed sodium and chlorine ions are now able to flow about in solution. The flow of negatively and positively charged ions through water and across cellular membranes plays a critical role in the firing of nerve cells, the contraction of muscles, and the process of cellular respiration that provides energy for the life functions of most living organisms. But it isn't just ionic compounds that dissolve in water. Many of the large molecules built of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and other atoms have electrically charged poles that are surrounded by the oppositely charged poles of water molecules. Ions and polar molecules like these are considered hydrophilic or water-loving because their electrical charges cause water molecules to surround them and hold them in solution. Sugars and amino acids are just a couple of examples of biological molecules that are hydrophilic and dissolve readily in water. Our blood plasma and the cytoplasmic fluid of cells are made up of salts such as sodium chloride and polar molecules such as proteins, amino acids, and glucose dissolved in water, as well as other substances in suspension. Thus, it is in water that the materials of life are transported and the chemical reactions essential to life occur. But water has yet other qualities that make it important to life on Earth, one being that it is what biochemists call a neutral substance. Although water is a stable compound, individual water molecules 
constantly gain, lose, and swap hydrogen atoms. At any given time, about two of every billion water molecules are broken down into ions. A positively charged hydrogen ion and a negatively charged hydroxide ion. The equal concentrations of positively charged hydrogen ions and negatively charged hydroxide ions make pure water a neutral substance. However, in many solutions, the concentration of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions is not equal. If the concentration of positively charged hydrogen ions exceeds the concentration of negatively charged hydroxide ions, the solution is acidic. If the concentration of negative hydroxide ions is greater, the solution is referred to as basic or alkaline. The concentration of hydrogen or hydroxide ions in a solution, such as blood plasma or cell cytoplasm, concerns biologists because these ions are highly reactive and often destroy or damage the molecules of which living molecules are made. In water, the equal numbers of hydrogen and hydroxide ions eventually recombine to form new water molecules. However, if there is a surplus of, say, hydrogen ions in a solution and not enough hydroxide ions with which to react and form water molecules, the hydrogen ions react with other molecules, often damaging or breaking them apart in the process. If the surplus of hydrogen or hydroxide ions is large, the number of destroyed molecules will be large. The existence of this type of condition can threaten the survival of an organism. Thus, living organisms must maintain the number of hydrogen and hydroxide ions dissolved in their blood and cytoplasm within a very narrow range. Acids are ionic substances that release hydrogen ions when dissolved in water. For example, Hydrochloric acid, when added to pure water, separates into positive hydrogen and negative chlorine ions. A base is an ionic substance that releases hydroxide ions when dissolved in water. When, for example, the base sodium hydroxide is added to water, it separates into positively charged sodium ions and negatively charged hydroxide ions. Interestingly, Mixing equal amounts of hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide initiates a chemical reaction called a neutralization reaction. The hydrogen and hydroxide ions join to form water molecules, and the sodium and chloride ions join to form the ionic solid, salt. The pH scale which ranges from 0 to 14, expresses the degree of acidity of a solution. pH paper, or specialized electronic devices, are used to measure pH. The number 7 at the middle of the pH scale is assigned to pure water. Acids have a pH below 7, the strongest acids having a pH of 0. Bases have a pH above 7, the strongest having a pH of 14. The fluids, such as blood plasma, which bathe the cells of mammals, including humans, and the fluids in cell cytoplasm are nearly neutral, with a pH of about 7.3 to 7.4. Changes of pH as small as 2 tenths can cause drastic changes in both the structure and function of cells. The death of cells, or an entire organism, can result from the reactions between hydrogen and hydroxide ions and the molecules that make up cells. Fortunately, substances called buffers, such as bicarbonate and phosphate, maintain constant pH levels in living organisms by capturing or releasing hydrogen ions depending on pH levels in the organisms. Biologists also study pH levels in the environment. Acid rain, that has a pH of between 2.5 and 5.5, compared to the 5.6 of normal rain, is a significant environmental threat in several regions of the world, often dramatically increasing the acidity of the water supply upon which the organisms of an area rely. In the United States, 
Acid rain and fog have destroyed forest land atop Mount Mitchell in North Carolina and robbed a number of lakes in the Adirondack Mountains of New York of many species of aquatic life. Fortunately, biologists and other people who have taken the time to understand the chemical processes involved in the destruction of habitat have intervened to help society stop and even reverse the devastation to the living world and many of the ecosystems impacted by acid rain and fog. In this program, we've seen how charged particles, called ions, are formed as atoms acquire or give up electrons, and how covalent bonds are formed as atoms share the electrons in their outer energy levels. In addition, we've seen part of the critical role water plays in the living world. Learning how ions and molecules the basic components of living organisms are formed and the critical role water plays in the existence of all living organisms is a critical step in becoming an informed citizen of the living world of which we are all a part. <laughs>